my background is that I've been in quality assurance since 1994. I started at Merck in their GCP veterinary arena. I, I have a medical background and laboratory background, and I was assigned as a auditor in their GCP human clinical trials division, and then moved to Allergan in California. From there I went to small biotech, eventually went to quintiles, and then moved back to Europe. I'm originally from Europe, and this is why this, this is online. I'm actually currently in southern Europe. I live in Macedonia right above Greece, and I host quite a lot of EMA, uh, MHRA inspections across Europe and so have uh, hands-on working knowledge within the, the realm of GCP and the way clinical trials and things are run out here in Europe. So a quick check. In, for this particular session, it really is focused on clinical operations, whether you're in compliance or, or in quality, quite a lot of the different fields within clinical trials, the ancillary divisions, are, they're also applicable, whether you work in safety and pharmacovigilance or regulatory affairs, data management, or regulatory. All right, so we will be talking about general terms and what they all mean and also what the differences are with the inspectors and inspections and some of the things is changing in FDA as well over the last several years with the reorganization of FBA. So we'll talk about that later on as the presentation keeps going. We're also going to talk about trial master files, what serious breaches means, and how that applies not only to what's going on in Europe and specifically with MHRA, but also general reporting requirements for studies that are multi-center global, and then common inspection questions. So we're going to learn how to describe how to become inspection ready at all times and certainly in clinical operations that's part of the purview of what you guys are supposed to be doing on a continuous basis. We'll explain the differences between EMA and MHRA because there are some nuances to how each group works. And especially with Brexit, even though it hasn't happened yet. It, from what I understand now, by January 31st, it's supposed to be completely official. They're supposed to move away from the European Union completely. Talk about tools, how to prepare, how to organize, and how to mitigate any inspection findings specifically, and also to identify any records that need to be made available during the inspection. So MHRA is the UK equivalent of the FDA, while the EMA is the EU equivalent of FDA. So MHRA specifically stands for Medicines and Healthcare Products, the regulatory agency, and then you have the European Medicines Agency. Again, like I said earlier, for the moment, the United Kingdom is still part of Europe, but they are moving away. They're supposed to go across from the, actually, the EMA used to have offices in the UK, and they have moved out last year, April of this year. They started last year in October, moving their offices, and now they're actually located in Amsterdam. MHRA and EMA. Okay, so this is where, this is actually a screenshot of where the EM, MHRA actually is. So their responsibilities, just like FDA, are really focused on their country. They are looking at clinical trials conducted in the UK, and that includes Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England. And the UK is actually, you have Great Britain, the UK, and then all of these other divisions. The UK encompasses all of Great Britain and their associated areas. We're also going to, MHRA covers CROs, sponsors, sites academic institutions, if you have heard of possibly the NHS system, which is the National Health and Services System, this is where many of the clinical trials are actually occurring in the UK, a lot of the university hospitals as they're part of a socialized medicine perspective, which is different than our system in the US. 
They're also looking at marketing applications that are made directly to the MHRA. Almost all inspections are system-based. They're not linked to any submission. So just because a study is ongoing or has completed, they, have, they can come out at any time. And many times they are doing inspections while the study is still ongoing. They don't actually have to wait until you do your submission like FDA. So FDA typically waits until you have your submission in. A lot of the sites are already closed unless they're doing follow-up like for oncology. And so MHRA doesn't really stick to that model. They can. They usually are asked as part of the EMA inspection, but they can go out at any time and do lots of inspections, including phase one units as part of a certification process as well.